<laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny, though. Remember on the bus? Let me talk to the camera. Is, is the camera on me now? Okay. <laughs> and I'm talking to you directly. Mark Lowry used to say on the bus, <laughs> and I know she would take the sign down if we'd put it on her. This is the most perfect human being who ever oh, lived. Boy. Mark would say, Janet. Is there ever a bad word that forms in the back of your head? Is there ever an anger or anything? I mean, he would try to just disturb you in every way he could disturb you. And you'd smile and you'd, and you'd grin and people say, is this really her? I'm sorry, this is really her. Well, of course, with Mark, anything he said, you know, you'd laugh at anything he said because he's just naturally so funny. But, oh, he just loved to give me grief. He just <laughs> lived for it. <laughs> There's got to be a bad word somewhere that's going to come. <laughs> well, one year we were, the vocal band, the tour was in Greensboro near where I lived. So I went and picked him up and we went to lunch and we walked in this little hole in the wall and he told the waitress, he said, we're on our honeymoon. She and I are on our honeymoon. <laughs> we came here to eat. <laughs> and it's like, you know, he's just full of stuff. And, and you just have to laugh because he's so comical. But you just never know what he's going to come out with. Was North Carolina your, were you born in North Carolina? I was born in North Carolina. And so you still live close to your home, right? Yes. I moved away when I was 18, and John and I moved back the year before I got sick in 2004. Yeah. My family's all still there. Did you live in Nashville for a time? I did. I lived yeah. there several years. But North Carolina's been your home. North Carolina's home, I and I always knew I would go back one day. Your parents still there? They are. My dad's 80, he's gonna be 86 this year, and my mom 82. <laughs> still healthy? Healthy, has a big vegetable garden every year. They can and freeze. And, yeah. Do you garden? Mm, I help my dad. <laughs> I like, help my dad. <laughs> that's like Gloria and I said, you know, my dad's such a good gardener. We mm. said, why do that? Why, why reinvent the wheel, you know? <laughs> and I didn't help him. I didn't help him grow stuff, but I did get down on my hands and knees and pick a lot of green beans. Mm. I've done that too. And it was worth every second. Yes. Yes, indeed. <laughs> They're so good. God's in the green beans, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> Gloria made some good green beans last night, right? Oh, that dinner she made last night was amazing. Mm. She's, she's still a good cook. She's a great cook. And you and she are the best hosts ever. You, you just create this environment that's so comfortable and and. It's fun and it's informative and you just make us feel like we're all just kicking around at home. You know how much fun it is to tell people, we live in the same house we lived in when we taught school. 52 mm. years, the same <laughs> house, right? It is. Same old brick floor. It's full of character. The first time we walked into Billy and Ruth Graham's house up on top of the mountain there in Asheville, we said, this reminds us a lot of our place because they had bricks, they had brick on the floors too. And in the kitchen, they had barn, barn okay. wood mm -hmm. and baskets. That's right. <laughs> so we said, hey, we're at home. That's your house. Yeah. It's just so warm. How'd you know when you were a kid? I mean, I mean, who were the groups? Who were the singers? Or what? And I'm asking this because when I was in the sixth or seventh grade, I forget when it was, and I first heard Jay Cass and this thing, when <laughs> I said, I'd love to do that. Well, we loved everybody, but we particularly loved the Rambos because I, I loved the fact that Dottie played a guitar, which is unusual, and wrote songs, and she was kind of the leader sort of of the group, at least philosophically, I guess. And uh, I loved that, and I loved their family harmony, and so I wanted to, wanted to write songs and sing. So you left when you were, when you were 18. Mm -hmm. Then how old were you when you joined the Gaither organization? <laughs> that would have been probably 20 years later, wouldn't it? Yes. 
Um, let's see, it was about 90, 1990 maybe. Yeah. And who was the person? Or maybe eight, maybe who, who was the person that, that brought you to our attention? I guess it was Mark, probably. Mark Lowry. I probably. What an introduction, Mark Lowry. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still stay in touch with him? Yeah. I, I told the ladies at the tea today. Uh, you know, I waited so long to get married. Yeah. People were so, you know, when are you going to get married? And I told them at the tea. Um, the first question he asked me when I got back from my honeymoon was yeah. whether or not Medicare had a maternity plan. <laughs> so I said, with friends like that, <laughs> you have to keep a lot of them. <laughs> but yeah, he and his family were, were very special to me. Boy, uh, and when you traveled, you traveled with us what, for 10, 12, 13? I did. 15 years ago? Yeah, yes, uh, more than that, I think. Yeah. Back in the days before the videos. Yeah. Uh, with the cathedrals, the vocal band and the cathedrals. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. A lot of fun. A lot of Oh, these awesome, awesome windows of time. And you still sing with your sister. I still, my sister travels with me now and we do the sister thing and we are having more fun than I would have ever imagined. How much do you talk about your childhood and the craziest things you do? Well, just a little bit, a little bit, but my sister is the outgoing one. She should have been doing what I've done all along because she just never meets a stranger and she's real funny and she's a great storyteller. I love your sister. And she's great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to bring her the next time. Um, so we're just having a lot of fun and just, you know, you never know what's ahead of you. You never know how good it's going to be or how challenging it's going to be. But these are really good days. The crazy thing about you, and I don't, I don't understand <laughs> the left brain, right brain thing, <laughs> because obviously you are an artist. You're very artistic. <laughs> but at the same time, you've always played around with math from the very beginning mm -hmm. and also with numbers from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And also doing your own investing. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit unusual for because <laughs> the most of the artists I deal with don't have a clue about pennies. <laughs> I never forget Mark Lowry telling me telling me one time, I said, Bill, you you are the stingiest guy that I've ever seen. I said, I'm not I'm not stingy, Mark. I'm frugal. Yes. Yeah, big diff. Would you describe yourself as frugal? I would. I would. Um, our parents taught us, and our parents, you know, my mom worked in a mill and my dad, same. So they never made a lot of money, but they taught us that with every paycheck, you put a little bit in savings. It doesn't have to be a lot, but just a little bit, and that's, you do it every time without ever changing that. And you have money at the end of the year or at the end of, you know, when you retire that you never missed. And you never anticipated. So we just kind of, my sister and I both just kind of followed that rule. And I've always loved numbers and I love ratios and percentages. And Boring. Uh, I know, I know. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> I, used to, I used to take statistics when I did my grad work. I take statistics. <laughs> In fact, I had, uh, I've got a friend, Lila Boren, who's been with me in board meetings. And he was always kidding me, stay away, Gaither, stay away, Gaither. But boy, some of those statistics are so, so They are. But that turns you on. Well, uh, and it pays off if you pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd have paid a little bit more attention. <laughs> well, but you know, numbers are also closely related to music. Because uh -huh. every every chord you make is separated by space, yeah. and you know music is about not only the note you hear but the silence. You Absolutely, know? that's equally important. So it's just like this puzzle, and you go in there and you dig in, and you come out with these rational thinking and ideas and plans, and then you hope the stock market <laughs> cooperates. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been good lately, though. Yes, it has been. You know, it's interesting with numbers and with harmonics. With the vocal band, we work and work to get, you know, real tight chords and all of that. And sometimes you wonder how many of those folks out there totally understand it or even appreciate what, what you're doing. And when rock and roll came along in the 50s, the first thing that went was harmony. 
Hmm. Because it, it was basically a band, a four or five piece band, uh -huh. and a soloist. Right. And if there was harmony, it was like a, a single harmony line. And nobody was working about, working a, on blends and that kind of thing. Right. It was just, because <laughs> if you're singing full of uh, uh, throttle, you don't have to work about blends. <laughs> but I've often wondered with the vocal band, we take time and so much energy. And of course, you've sung with groups, uh -huh. with the Neelands. Uh -huh. And the time that you spent making the harmonics work and then making your blend work, uh -huh. you wonder how many people, I mean, how, how, many, how many of them say, I could care less? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I think more than you than a normal person would think. I yeah, hope so. I think so. The 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 comment we're getting now is uh, there were more people than I thought who were concerned about the sound mm -hmm. and said they really liked the sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe there's you know there's more out there than I thought. Janet, anybody who's followed your uh, career and, and your marriage <laughs> and, and all of that as has also followed your, uh, uh, your trip with cancer, you battled it. You battled it with class. And, uh, uh -huh. But the big C word is still a big word. In a, it's in, a big in, word. Anytime. It's a, quite a common word these days. Yeah. But, you know, I had so much support and I remember the first day I came home from chemotherapy, I saw these balloons on my front porch. And Gloria <laughs> had sent me a, a flower arrangement with balloons. And she had a little note in there. And she said, one down, three to go. Because I was planning on three chemotherapy treatments. Yeah. So every week after that, then, I would get a card from her, or I would get a gift, or I would get bath suds, or clothes. She buys really nice things. <laughs> Tell me about it. I mean, really nice. And you know what? Most of the time it's for other people. Oh, I'm sure it is. There it yes. is. So uh, then, of course, we, had, we did the radiation. Then we had to do a different type of chemotherapy because mine was especially egregious. And then about a year and a half later, my only sister was diagnosed. So we plowed through that again. But, you know, it's it's just part of the journey, and here we are, and we're certainly not worse for it. I think the hardest part for us was watching our dad, because he, he had two girls. Two girls. Yes. But, you know, our family just, we found out what we believed. It's one thing to talk about it and sing about it, but that shows you what you believe in the marrow of your bones. <laughs> Do you really believe what you're saying? And, it was a pleasant surprise to discover that we did. You know, the, the people that I know who have gone through difficult times and handled it the best psychologically and theologically, spiritually, and are, are, are people who know the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I talk quite a bit with with people who are not on the same side that I am as, uh -huh. as far as belief is concerned. And that's fine. Uh -huh. uh, because I think as Christians, we need to be uh, in the world. Uh -huh. And I think we need to be talking to folks. Right. And I know all the criticisms, and it seems like people who follow the Lord in those last few years have been shot at pretty hard at times. Uh -huh. And some of it we deserve. Uh -huh. Right. You know, we really, we really do. Uh, but at the same time, after I discuss it for a while, especially in growing old, I say, I say, what's the alternative? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if it's cynicism, God save me from right. that. Right, that's right. And uh, and maybe at times we're a little bit unrealistic. But the more Christians I talk to who face death and mm -hmm. who face problems, on the outside it looks pretty healthy to me. Yeah. That, that dying is part of life. And sometimes a de sometimes death is a gift. Yes. Because there are a lot worse things than dying. That's right. Well, and I think a, a Christian person understands that their life is in bigger hands than theirs. Absolutely. And I remember I heard you say one time on the bus, and I've never forgotten it, you said at some point in your life, 
the scales tilt yeah. to the other side, and yeah. there's more over on the other side than there is here to stay for. I will never forget that. And I've thought of that so much, and it is so true. Yeah, and the older you get. Yes. Uh, when, Uncle Jess said that. That was not original, original with me. He, I can remember him <laughs> squinting his eyes to say, Bill, <laughs> you're going to get the age one of these times where the scale starts to tip, and it is. I mean, yeah. When I think of the number of people who were very, very dear to me and very, very close to me, mm -hmm. and still are, even mm -hmm. in death. Right. But they're there, and I'm here. Yeah, that's right. And that's fine, too. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to live, isn't it? It's not bad. It sure isn't. And I think, you know, the past generation may have come to Christ from the standpoint of uh, eternal life and living forever in heaven. And that's part of the gospel. Mm -hmm. But I think at this stage, there are a lot of folks mm -hmm. who are weary of the hell on earth. Mm -hmm. I think so, too. And when you really believe what you believe, mm -hmm. if you really believe what the Bible says, you know, you keep going back to what Paul said, you know, to live as Christ, to die as gain, really. I hate to compete with a guy who really believed oh, that. Oh yeah, we don't want to. We don't want to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, that's putting your life on the mm -hmm. line. That's right. You know, you know the, the the people who go on the cruises with us. Okay. There's a lot of the cruises available. Come back and say, it's just a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. That's the way people on the outside would say. People on the inside would say that's a lot of joy. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and it seems like that ought to be true for the people who are serving the Lord. Mm -hmm. One of the joys of living this long is <laughs> to have in our circle friends that we dearly, dearly love. <laughs> Just being with you again last night, you and Gloria and I <laughs> ate her supper and watched that, that restaurant movie. <laughs> well, it was a hundred feet, feet from the other yes. restaurant, you know. <laughs> but to see the beauty of food, mm -hmm. The beauty of landscape, mm -hmm. the beauty, beauty of just young relationships, mm -hmm. the young chef and the girl he was in love with, <laughs> and then the and then the, the old couple <laughs> <laughs> who didn't like each other That's at first right. and and found out they had a little bit more in common than what they thought. Yes, <laughs> that was great. And I think followers of Christ see the joy and the beauty in everything. Mm -hmm. Because their joy is not dependent upon their circumstances. Their joy comes from a different source. Come from, mm -hmm. Comes from, from within. Mm -hmm. I did Ron Huff's, uh, or I was one of the speakers at Ron Huff's memorial service. And he was so, uh, you know, he did, he was the greatest arranger mm -hmm. probably ever in our business. Mm -hmm. My age, and passed away, uh, with Parkinson's mm. a month ago. But he, anytime we were in town, if he was in any kind of shape at all, he would come out to the concert and he was always so kind about the program. <laughs> the highs and the lows. And he would say, he'd say, boy, I appreciate the way you're not wearing out your tenors. <laughs> and I said, it's a full-time job because tenors have got high C's and they want to show you how many high C's they got. And then we say, you got this much talent, we want to use this much yes. of it tonight. Yes. <laughs> well, that's good. I've worked hard to try to, 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 try to uh -huh. save people's voices. Uh -huh. uh, uh, i never forget one night, uh -huh. Larnell, there was some uh, younger group out there singing at the top of their lungs, and the crowd was going crazy. Sure. This kid, this kid was doing all kind of wild, crazy things. Mm -hmm. And Larnell said, "They just love to hear you tear your throat up." <laughs> <laughs> well, but you know, part of the magic of that is not to overdo it. You know, it's like you just wow them. You you don't want to. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> you know, just wow now and then. <laughs> One of our problems, 
are the big songs that Gloria and I wrote are ballads, and they require some pretty big endings because he lives. Requ- mm. The King is Coming requires a big mm. ending. It is finished. Required. I've just oh. seen Jesus is big all the way through. That's right. And and so somebody will say, we want you to sing all your big songs. <laughs> I don't think you want to hear them all in a row. <laughs> I think we got to slow down here somewhere. That's me. A lot of times I have a promoter who's saying, I want you to do this and this and this and this and this, and they're all ballads. And I say, well, you know, I really Not can't in the same do, night. Not, not in the same <laughs> night. That's it. <laughs> Maybe we can come back tomorrow night. <laughs> yeah. Janet, you look beautiful. And uh, I, Gloria and I both said yes. They said, She's looking healthy, and you think you put on a little no, bit. Of I, have. <laughs> Jaws. I think you I keep waiting for the music. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> love you, my friend, we love and you and, too. and it's good to share this. Now, this is going to be on our what? Uh, 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 oh, good. On the YouTube channel, and 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 they say that's really big, right? Good. If you've enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button to get the latest content and check out the other great clips on the Gaither Music TV channel.